Every day I have to say to Jesus, Jesus, I feel like I'm carrying this and I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna exchange the hard stuff of my life and I'm gonna receive what you have for me. And what Jesus has for you is so much better. And you're like, but is it hard or is it easy? When you recognize who Jesus is, it makes it worth it. The hard things of this world you can encounter and you can walk through it with confidence doesn't mean it's easy. It means the hard things become light when I'm walking with Jesus. You may be seated. We're in the second week of a series called Rest for the Weary. If you're a guest with us, my name's Kyle. Really glad to have you. You can watch or listen to the first week. Last week, we looked at the invitation of Jesus from Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Today, we're going to look at the yoke of Jesus. And the third week of the series, we'll look at the heart of Jesus. There's a lot in these three verses. And church, I challenge you to memorize this passage. It's not test day. But that day's coming, just to let you know. If you haven't started working on memorizing this passage, you can do so. But uh, I'll never ask you to do something I'm not going to challenge myself to do, so give me a little grace here. I will not look at the back screen. Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is is light, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew 11, 28 through 30, write it on a card, put it somewhere you see it. I need daily reminders of the rest that Jesus offers. And I don't know who's in the room today. I don't know what's been brought into the room. I don't know what you've carried into the room. I don't know what you picked up this week and started carrying, and I don't know what you've been carrying for years and maybe even decades. But whatever you brought into the room, Jesus has a deal for you. He has an invitation for you. As we look at the yoke of Jesus, last week we looked at the invitation. The most understanding person who's ever lived is Jesus. Wherever you are at today, Whatever you're thinking, whatever you're feeling, whether you have any relationship with God in your background or you've been following him a long time, Jesus is the most understanding person who's ever lived because he's sympathetic and understanding in regard to our failings and in regard to our sin. Hebrews 4, 15 through 16 states, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence. Today, we get to go to the throne of grace today with confidence, not because of anything we've done or haven't done, but because of who Jesus is. That is his invitation. Dane Ortland writes, what elicits tenderness from Jesus is not the severity of the sin, but whether the sinner comes to him. And when we come to Jesus, he is gentle with us. And I am so grateful for that. The most approachable man who's ever Ben is also Jesus. And we'll look at this a little bit more in the third week of the series, but spoiler alert, Jesus being lowly simply means that he's accessible. He's approachable. Unlike the king or queen of England, Jesus does not require anything from us before we can come to him. All we have to do is open up ourselves to him and cry out for mercy. Later in the book of Hebrews, the word states he is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and going astray since he himself is subject to weakness. Jesus understands our weaknesses. And today I want to talk to you about the yoke. Every one of us in this room as we walked in today, we're yoked to something. There's no one who says I'm not yoked to anything. Every one of us is yoked to something. We're going to talk about what that yoke is. Jesus says my yoke is gentle and it's easy gentle and easy yoke. Who doesn't want that? Because some of us have been carrying around stuff that we shouldn't be carrying around. We've been carrying around even an ounce of guilt or shame 
over a long period of time turns into hundreds of pounds. Every step you take with one extra ounce, over 16 steps, that's one pound. Over days and over weeks and over years, we end up carrying thousands of pounds of extra weight that you were never intended to carry, my friend. Jesus has something to say to all of us. If we walked into the room today weary, burdened by our own decisions, by our own actions, we've stuff, stuck stuff in our bags, or other people have put things in our bags, we're carrying it around, and Jesus says, you are never meant to carry that. I want to look at this passage, Matthew eleven twenty 20 through 30, in light of another text in the book of Matthew. Matthew 7, verses, uh, chapter 7, 12 through 14. You guys look at verse 13, and you can just listen to this. Jesus says, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. One gate, first gate. What is it? It's wide. A lot of people can walk through this gate. You can see the gate from miles away. It's really, really, really wide. You can enter that gate a lot of different ways. There's a thousand different ways you can enter into that gate. The world says this is the way. It's really easy to follow into this gate. You can see it from a long ways away. You can enter into this gate. Jesus is talking about two gates here. We continue. And those who enter by it are many. Many people enter the wide gate. It's easy to be seen. But then he says, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and those who find it are few. This is an important text as we look at Jesus offering us rest. So you, you're like, what is it? Is following Jesus easy or is it hard? Sounds like a contradiction to me. So let's walk through this passage first. Matthew 7. There's comparing and contrasting going on here. Two gates. One is really, really wide and one is narrow. Okay, I'm tracking so far. One is easy to spot. The other is, is hard to spot, Okay. One gate, many people enter it. The other, few people enter it. But there is a difference. The contrast ends in verse 14. Those who find it are few. The narrow gate, they don't just enter it. What do they do? They find it. You find it. The beginning of the, the, the wide gate, they enter into it. So you have you enter into the wide gate the narrow gate, you don't just enter into the wide, and narrow gate. Are you tracking here? Many enter into the wide gate. Few must find the narrow gate. The book of Matthew, there's a theme in the book of Matthew, and this is the theme. It's all about dying to ourselves. It's, Galatians 2.20 says, For I am crucified with Christ in the life that I live. I no longer live in the flesh, but I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. My life is not my own. In order to truly find rest, you have to understand your life is not your own when you come to Jesus. You don't get to decide what to carry and what not to carry. Jesus decides that for you. I can pick up a whole lot of things this week and begin to carry them. It will weigh me down. It actually will begin to cause scars. There'll be wounds. I will hurt the more I carry. And my friend, Jesus does not want that for you. Many of us are carrying things we have no business carrying. Expectations from other people. Maybe there's things we're doing in our life right now that we never signed up for. Someone else signed us up for. You ever been there? We're carrying guilt around things that we did a long time ago or shame or that's, that's too heavy. That's too heavy. When I was in high school, a bunch of buddies and I went to the mall, which that story is not going to end well. But we were daring each other, right? I dare you to run up that escalator, the, down, the downward escalator. I'm like, game on. I'm going to do that. I'll take most challenges. I've matured since then. But I'll, I'll take, I'm up for a good challenge. So I remember doing that. I made it to the top, but it took a lot longer than it should have. It took a lot longer than if I would have just taken the stairs up. I spent way too much energy. I was, I was exhausted once I got to the top. 
Some of us feel like life right now. We're running up a downward escalator. And we're working harder. We're striving more. And we're getting up earlier and we're staying up later. And it just gets heavier and heavier and heavier. The invitation that Jesus offers us, it's, it's really important. Now what, I'm gonna, if you haven't picked it up a little bit here, I like to hike. Some of you guys know me. You're like, that's an understatement. I love to hike. I love to hike. Some trails are wide, and there's a lot of people on these trails. Some trails are really narrow, especially the higher up you go on altitude, and you, two people cannot walk on that trail at the same time. So what's Jesus saying in Matthew 7? Number one, the gate, the narrow gate, one person enters at a time. You don't go through that gate with your family just because your family's in that gate. You don't go through that gate with your family, your friends, or, or your church members. You personally go through that gate one person at a time. The other thing that is important to note, when you go through a narrow gate, you can't carry everything that you've got. There are times you have to take your bag off in order to continue on this path. In order to go through the gate, you can't carry everything. When you come to Jesus and you follow Jesus, you give your life to Jesus, Jesus says you've got to give up some things. You are not meant to hold on to everything that you want to hold on to and follow Jesus. Jesus says you must die to yourself. Your life is not your own anymore. You don't get to decide what to carry and what you, what you want to carry and other people want to put in your bag. You don't get to decide that, Jesus says. You, you give me your bag, I'll exchange it for something much better. You can't go through a narrow, narrow gate with all your possessions that you own. Some of us have, we've loaded up moving trucks and U-Hauls, and some of us have done that in the summer, and trailers. We've all been there, right? When you follow Jesus, you're giving that up. The disciples, they gave, up, they gave it all up. They gave up their nets. They gave up their careers. They gave up things in order to follow, in order to follow Jesus. Peter says later on, in the book of Matthew, Peter says to Jesus in Matthew 19, 27 through 39, Jesus, Peter's usually the first one to speak, we've left everything to follow you. What's going to be, what do you have for us? Some of us have, hey, I've been, Jesus, I've been doing a lot for you. What do you have for me? This is, this is Peter's question. Jesus says, I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his throne, you have followed me, you will also sit on a throne. Everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake, listen, this is a promise for us, you lay down, you lay down your stuff, you lay down your possessions, you can't take it, you cannot carry everything you want to be carrying in your world, you have to give it up. Jesus says, you do that. This is a promise for all of us. You will receive a hundred times as much as you will, and you will inherit eternal life. But he says, Peter, many are first, but many who are first will be last, and the last shall be first. Maybe you've heard that before. Following Jesus, you gotta deny yourself. You, 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 you can't make it about you and what you want and follow Jesus at the same time. This is hard I'm not saying this is easy. This is really, really difficult. And this is not a one-time deal. Matthew 11, 28 through 30 is not one time in your life. For me, it's every day. Every day I have to say to Jesus, Jesus, I feel like I'm carrying this and I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna exchange the hard stuff of my life and I'm gonna receive what you have for me. And what Jesus has for you is so much better. And you're like, but is it hard or is it easy? When you recognize who Jesus is, it makes it worth it. The hard things of this world you can encounter and you can walk through it with confidence doesn't mean it's easy. It means the hard things become light when I'm walking with Jesus. Now, what's a yoke? We have an image here. This is a yoke. Briefly mentioned it last week. This is a yoke. This was placed on two beasts, 
in order to keep them going in the same direction, keep them pulling in the same way. It, they were, it was a gentle yoke. It was made that it wouldn't constrain them or choke them in any way. So it was very normal in the culture in which Jesus is speaking. This is a yoke. I believe everyone in this room today is yoked to something. The yoke that Jesus says that you're carrying, that you're yoked to, he says, I, he doesn't just simply say, take on my yoke. He says, exchange your yoke for something better. So what is the yoke that naturally we carry around with us? Guilt, shame, other people's expectations of how you should live your life, other people's thoughts about you, your own thoughts about you. If we could weigh our thoughts about how we feel about ourselves today, for some of us, we're carrying double our body weight with unhealthy negative thoughts, and we're carrying that around, and every ounce matters when you hike. Every ounce matters. I love to hike, and I did something kind of crazy a number of years ago. I've, I've done a lot of crazy things, and I'll, it'll take years for me to share all the crazy things I've done. But during COVID, we weren't doing anything, so I'm like, I've always wanted to hike the Grand Canyon, so let's, I'm going to go hike the Grand Canyon. And there's a hike. If you're not from Arizona, there's a hike that's kind of a big deal. It's rim to rim. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going I'm to go up, and I'm going to do rim to rim. I'm going to start on the south rim. I'll end on the north rim. But it was COVID, so the shuttles weren't running, and... The, there were no hotels and the lodges were all closed. So naturally, I'm like, well, I guess I'll go back, right? So I'll, I'll go from South Rim to North Rim and then I'll go back. And I didn't have a permit to spend the night, so I guess I have to do this all in one day. So it was like 54 miles. I'm not the smartest hiker, but I like to hike. I hadn't done this hike before. I had talked to some friends and and like, oh, you got to bring this, you got to bring that. And so I'm loading up my bike. Now, when I hike, if it's a couple-hour hike, depending on the year, I can do it without bringing anything. Maybe I can hold water in my hand. If it's several hours, now maybe a small camelback. I can throw my backpack. But if it's a day hike, now I'm going to be carrying some stuff. Now, now I'll throw a few things, right? But every ounce matters what you're bringing. I brought way too much stuff on that hike. 80% of what I packed in my backpack, I did not use. I carried food from the south end of the canyon to the north end of the canyon and back again, and I never, I never ate it. <laughs> I carried snow spikes because somebody said, yeah, it's slippery on the north rim. When you get up there, you got to, and which is true, but it had melted by the time I got there. So I carried heavy spikes for my boots that I never needed. And it caused, it caused some scarring on my shoulders I took my backpack off, a lot of bruising and wounding because I was carrying stuff I never needed and I shouldn't, shouldn't have been carrying. Some of us in the room, if we're honest today, we're carrying some stuff around. And Jesus says, you have no business carrying that. You don't carry that. I don't want you to carry that. You were never meant to carry that. You were not built. You were not created to carry that. I remember getting, getting back and taking that backpack off. I, this is TMI. But I lost all my toenails, right? It just was not, not designed to do that in one day. It, take, it took months for, for my toenails to come back. Some of us are carrying around things that are causing, it's, it's hurt. It's painful. You're like, well, I, I, I hear this invitation from Jesus, but I want to hold on to this. Narrow is the gate. What is the yoke that Jesus wants to exchange? It is the gospel. Spurgeon says, Jesus has a burden for us to carry for him. So let us be in earnest in bearing it. It is a joy and a privilege to carry what Jesus gives me, not anybody else. Nobody else has the right to give me something to carry. Jesus has that right. I trust Jesus with what he's going to put in my bag and what he's asking me to carry. But it is a light burden, so let us be full of joy at the very prospect of carrying it. Jesus says, no, you're, you, you, you don't come to me and then you... You're not yoked to anything. You're yoked to Jesus. So what does that mean? You're yoked to Jesus. It means 
you're going in the same direction Jesus is taking you. You don't get to decide the direction. Jesus is the, is the one who's deciding where we're going. But I'm connected to Jesus. That is a good position to be in. And he's going to do the heavy lifting. He says, I will never leave you. When you're yoked to him, he will never leave you. He is there by your side doing the heavy lifting. And some of the hiking that I've done, different places, there are people trained and qualified to carry your bags because they are acclimated to the mountains. It's actually part of their economy. It's part of their livelihood that they would take your bags and they're faster hikers carrying our luggage than we are without any luggage. They're called Sherpas in some part of the world. They're called porters in some part of the world. They, they place it on their head. They put it on their back. In Nepal, there's, there are villages and towns that there is no other way to get supplies from one village to another village. So men are hired to place all the supplies on their back. Here's a few pictures from, from that. And they carry it up the hill. There's, there's no planes, there's railroad, trucks. Those don't exist. And so they just load everybody, everything onto everybody's back, and they do that, right? Now, there's only a short window a young man can do that. That's not a career because right? it takes a toll on the body when you carry that much stuff. You were never meant to do that, carrying bricks and stones. Some of us walked into the room with that today. We were never meant to carry some of the things that we are carrying. What is the yoke? It's the gospel. To be yoked is to realize that Jesus fully carries us. To be yoked to Jesus means he is actually fully carrying us. Peter says, cast all your cares on him. Cast all your worry, cast all your anxiety on him. Why? Because he cares for you. Jesus cares for you like nobody else cares for you. There's no one else who cares for you like Jesus. And he says, give it to me. You can trust him. Whatever it is that you're, you're holding on to, whatever it is, whatever prayer you, you feel like you're, it's a person, it's a thing, it's your career, you're in a toxic environment, whatever it is, trust him with that. Give that to him. And what will he give to you in return? It will be really, really good. There's a lot of things we're carrying around that we just don't, don't need to. And here's some of the things I've learned in my journey over the years. I can't be everyone's savior. I can't be anyone's savior. I can't be my own savior. Our children's or anyone else's. That's on Jesus. And we can't let others keep loading us down with their baggage, the stuff they must learn to bring to Jesus. You haven't called any of us to be the bullseye for other people's target practice. None of us have been called to be the satchel bag of somebody else's anger. None of us are, are meant to carry the 50-pound what-ifs of life around with us. None of us are meant to be the three-wish genie of uh, someone else's happiness. And if thoughts could be weighed, as I mentioned earlier, trying to carry double our body weight and worrisome anxiety or fears, Jesus doesn't want that for us. There's a better way. Jesus says, I, I have something better for you. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. A few practical things that I have found helpful or I am finding helpful, I have not arrived in this area. A few things, let me challenge you to, to take some steps. One is unplug. As far as I know, Jesus never had a smartphone, laptop, iPad, device. He got a lot of stuff done. Most caring, compassionate person who ever walked the planet. What would it look like for you to do less technology? Now, some of you are like, I have no technology. You're in, you're in a good place. But what would it mean to just do less? Technology-free day, technology-free hour, technology-free five minutes. What would it look like to do less? If you have three devices, what would it look like to have two? Do you need an email from one person hitting five devices? What would it look like for you to just eliminate some of those devices? 
What would it look like to remove social media from our phones? Remove all social media apps and you only have utility apps on your phone. A utility app would be what you would use, like maps. Nobody's, I like geography, but I'm not going to spend three hours diving deep into maps. <laughs> right? So there will be other social media apps that you can dive deep into. You don't know. You go, get them off your phone. That doesn't mean you're getting rid of social media. It just when I'm sitting in a doctor's office, I, I can talk to somebody rather than put my head down and dive deep. Two books I'd recommend for readers in the room, The Digital Fast by Darren Whitehead, speaking to the church, speaking to Christians about spending a little less time in technology and more time in relationships, more time in being fully present. The Digital Fast by Darren Whitehead. John Mark Comer has written a book, The Elimination, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, learning some things about slowing down Jesus was a very busy man, but he was never in a hurry. Slowing down, focusing on what and who God has in front of me. Friendships. So th friendships. Do you have friendships that you can sit and you can talk with? And are, you in a, and are you in a community group, a small group? Do you have friendships you can text and you can call about what you're, what's going on? The calendar. Evaluate your calendar. Or is there anything you're doing because somebody wanted you to do it? Be willing and have the courage to say no to some things in your life. Simple prayers to begin your day. Jesus, when we're weary and overwhelmed, thanks for not starting with a lecture in time management. Here's where faith and grace kiss. When we're overburdened, you tell us to pick something else up. The yoke and the light burden that Jesus offers. It's a daily reminder. You're not meant to carry, to carry everything. And whether there are things you've placed in there that need to come out, whether there's things other people have placed in there that need to come out, exchange it for what Jesus has. We're going to end our service by singing a, a new hymn. You're like, I didn't know there were new hymns. It's a newer hymn. And I'm going to ask you to have some courage today. Whatever it is, what, if there was something that struck you or whatever it is that God is speaking to you, I want to encourage you that there is prayer available for you today. Down front during this last song, if you would like prayer, you feel like you've been holding on to something, it's time to let it go. Come on up. We'll have people here ready and willing and through that prayer, the Holy Spirit will minister to you. It will be really good. Now, that takes courage. Do what God's asking you to do when it comes to that. If not here in this room, tell somebody. Tell a friend or family member, hey, I've been carrying this, and I need to let it go. I need to give it to Jesus. Jesus. I don't think he ever had a backpack. I don't know that for certain, so don't quote me on that. But he did say the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He didn't carry a lot of stuff with him. But Jesus is your porter. And Jesus is your Sherpa. Because he's acclimated. He knows what you're going through. He's sympathetic. He's gentle. He's kind. And he wants to say, hey, give, give, it, give it to me. Let me carry that. I want to walk with you. I'm not, I'm not going to go up ahead of you. I'm not going to come be. I'm going to walk by your side, but I'm going to carry it for you. And I will give you what you need. You don't get to decide what you need. I'll decide what you need, and I'll give it to you when you need it. Jesus is our porter, and Jesus is your Sherpa. Would you pray with me? Father, in this next few moments as we come to you in worship and in prayer, I ask that your spirit minister to all of us. And whether we feel it right now in this moment or there's been times in our life we felt it, we are just, we're crushed. We're overwhelmed. It hurts. We're exhausted. We're tired. We're burdened. 
said, Jesus, I'll, I'll be the first to say, I, I want what you have for me. Would we have the freedom in this room to just simply say, Jesus, I lay it before you. Give me what you have for me. My life is not my own. You get to decide what I carry. Father, as we, we come to a time of worship and prayer, I, I just pray that people would feel welcome to take a step today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.